What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Kicker Scuba Marine. If you are new to our channel, do me a huge favor, click this little subscribe button here and ding that little bell as well. That way you guys will be notified every time we upload new content. Now here behind me is our lake. It's an 18 mile long lake. It's our namesake here. This is Lake Hickory, hence we're Lake Hickory Scuba and Marina. Um, and you guys see a ton of our underwater salvage and repair videos where we're either fixing something underwater or we're bringing objects up that sunk, whether it's a boat or a car or something like that. But one of the things that you don't really get to see a lot of is our survey videos and our survey or our survey dives. And what we basically do there is we swim around along the bottom and we take a lot of data from the bottom, whether how deep it is, what the bottom composition is like, what the current is like, what the uh, contour is like. And a lot of this information we get in two different standpoints. One, we get it from a sonar system, but we also do it hands-on. We actually go underwater, put our hands on stuff, and we record stuff for companies. And that's what today's video is gonna be about. We did an actual underwater survey for one of the companies here that's building a walking bridge across the lake and so we're going to go down i'm going to kind of walk you through what it is we're doing in this video and kind of explain why we do this in person versus just trusting it on sonar as well but with that being said we're going to get up the lake today and we're going to get into it All right, guys, so what you're looking at on screen, and I wanted to show you this before we got started. This is actually the upper end of our lake. This is what we call the 321 area. And I'm gonna give you some landmarks here in a minute, but if you'll notice those markers there, there's 10 di different markers there. This is the Riverwalk Bridge that's gonna be built by the city of Hickory. Um, and this is where it's coming out across the water, out of the park area, this little area here to the right is called Geithner Park. And this is where the bridge is gonna come out of the park area and then back into the land itself. And those individual markers there are the locations of where the pylons are going to be. This is the 321 bridge, which you'll see in our video as well. But if we zoom in, each of those markers have very specific GPS coordinates that we have to go down on and just do a quick survey of what's underneath the water. And I wanted to show you this just so you had a better idea of what we were diving on and what, what the whole purpose of this video was. One of the uh, tools that we actually enjoy using, of course, is Sonar, and there's many different brands out there. We actually prefer both Garmin and Humminbird over any of the others. Um, in this particular situation, we're using a Garmin, and there's so many great things that you can do with a Sonar, whether it's down scans, uh, side scan, uh, traditional 2D, or in this case, 3D Sonar. Um, you can see that not only can we see the contour of the bottom of the lake, um, we can check depth, we can see uh, anything from water temperature, um, and we can see the main uh, channel bed through here. So there's a lot of good information that we can get. If you look in the bottom right hand screen there, you will see the GPS coordinates. We can actually type in these coordinates to help us find the exact location that we need uh, to, to be able to do our job as well, which is exactly what we did in this video. All right, so now we're actually gonna get into the dive and you're gonna hear uh, a lot of talking during this, not just for me, you're gonna hear talking on the footage itself. And that's because we are using full face masks for this. And we're actually getting assistance and guidance underwater by the crew leader, not just our boat leader here, but also the crew leader of the project. He's on the uh, surface comm unit and he's gonna be directing us in what areas we need to be based off where our bubbles is. And as you'll see in the video, there's very limited visibility. so. Uh, it really helps with him being able to pinpoint those GPS coordinates on the surface and telling us that we need to go north, south, east, west, or come shallower towards shore and all that. So you're going to be here and talking as well. But on this first little drop, we are going to go down on the first three coordinates, which they call bent number four. And we're going to go down on that center coordinate there and basically do a circle survey or a circle search um, where we have one diver planted and he's got a reel system. And then myself, 
uh, if the other diver is the pivot man, I'm actually going to be the one that swims around and looks. And all we're doing is basically a uh, 12 foot diameter, if you will, or a 20, or I'm sorry, a 12 foot radius search or a 24 foot diameter search of the area. And what we're looking for is bottom composition. We're looking to see how deep it is. We're looking for hazards. We're looking for anything that the uh, bridge crew needs to know before they start construction here. Um, we're also looking to confirm what we already know based off what the sonar told us. And one of the things that sonar does for us is it gives us a return of what the bottom's gonna be like. So in sonar, the way it works, it sends out a signal, that signal bounces off an object, it comes back to us, and that, that signal that comes back is called a return. If we get a really hot return, that typically means it's a very dense material, a very hard bottom. If we get a soft return, then the signal is not going to be quite as bright on screen, and that usually represents a soft bottom. Well, here we got a hard bottom return, a very bright return. That meant that it was a very dense bottom, and we can see that at 19 feet, it was a hard bottom with just a very, very minimal uh, silt coverage, maybe less than two inches of silt covering the hard bottom. Now this section of the lake is known for just basically hard rock. It's all bedrock there and it is on a very steep incline even though we're technically on a shelf where we're at. It is a very steep incline and if we go back real quick and look at the contour of the lake in the 3D image, you'll see what I mean by a very steep incline. But where they're building this bridge, it's basically a shelf, so it's not really that big a deal. But there are hazards here, uh, and we're going to swim across those hazards as we basically do a survey. But basically, like I said, we're swimming around, we're seeing what the depth is, we're seeing um, you know what the bottom composition's like, we're looking for any hazards, uh, and we are being guided by the personnel on top. Now we've got a good general idea of where we're at uh, because we did drop a, uh, a marker buoy, uh, but by being able to be led by the surface crew uh, makes things a lot easier, and, and this is one of the reasons that we do use full face mask here. Um, and here it's kind of funny, I ran into a big old tree you can see, uh, and you'll see just how big this tree is here in a minute. It's probably a foot and a half um, in width there. Uh, I don't necessarily remember how long this tree was. It didn't really matter to me. Uh, the main thing is, is that we just got it marked so that we can get it out of the way uh, for the bridge crew. But like I said, that's the purpose of this dive. We just swim around and see what's there. We confirm what we see on sonar. And a lot of people will say, well, sonar is so accurate and you can get the exact GPS coordinates, then why, why is the need for divers? Why still get in the water? And it's because we may see something that the sonar doesn't. If there's a, uh, a signal shadow, or basically where the signal is going and it's creating a shadow, we need to know what's on the other side of that shadow, and we're not going to be able to see that on sonar. So we still need the hands-on of the divers going down and, and seeing what's there. So we basically finished our first dive, and we have edited this because this took about two and a half to three hours to do, but um, we just finished our first dive. We're fixing to go down on the second location, and we're going to go down on the structure as a center point and then basically do a directional heading away from it into bent number three. And we're going to look at the two uh, areas where... Um, they're going to be building the, the bridge columns here. So as we descend down, we're just going to kind of stay together. We've already got our navigational heading from the surface with our compass, and you'll see we'll follow those headings. And once again, the surface crew is following our bubbles and telling us when we went too far, if we need to go to the left or to the right or north, south, east, west. So once we get down here to the bottom of this platform, we are going to go ahead and get our heading once again, and we're going to start following that heading. And we're doing the exact same thing. We are looking for debris, just like that stick I just picked up there. We're looking for large boulders. We're looking uh, for anything that may hinder the bridge crew when they come out here to construct the bridge itself. Typically, boulders and stuff tend to be a little bit difficult to drill through, um, especially if they're setting up their uh, their casings, which is what their drill bit goes down through. Uh, if they're trying to set it up and it's a very rocky bottom and they can't get a, a good solid seat of their casings, they're going to have a lot of difficulty trying to drill in to uh, set these bridge columns and things like that.
But here you can see I'm getting my heading and I'm making sure that I'm going in the right direction and I'm basically just swimming around and taking data points. I'm taking depth, I'm taking visibility, I'm taking bottom composition, bottom contour, I'm taking and I'm actually radioing that information. Everything that you see pop up on screen, I'm actually radioing up to the surface and they're making notes on. Um, they can get exact GPS coordinates based off where my bubbles are as well, where they're seeing the bubbles, and based off where we have our markers um, as well. So. That's basically what a survey is. This is why we do it. This is how we do it. Um, obviously, we want to be safe when we do this as well. But you can see the visibility is not really our friend right now. So we are having to basically rely on seeing with our hands. Um, and then once we kind of record that particular area, then we're going to come up, we'll regroup, and we'll move over to another area. And I'm going to kind of walk you through that area as well. You will notice that we're doing two different search techniques or surveying techniques. One is a circle search or a circle survey, and then of course the other one is a directional. The reason we're doing the directional, that center platform that you saw there is kind of in our way. Um, to be honest, I'm not sure what the platform is actually for because it's not a part of the bridge. According to the bridge crew, they're going to remove it as they're building a bridge. So maybe it's just there to assist them. Um, but we can't do a complete circle of the area and get that 24 foot uh, diameter search with that in our way. So what we're doing is using it as a reference point to start a navigational search and then we will swim in the actual directions that we need to swim to conduct the survey. And like I said before, the boat crew is leading us. They're radioing down to us and telling us you went too far, you need to come shallower. And they can actually see us on the sonar, which is really cool. I'll try to show you that, guys, in a, in a different video of where you can see divers on the sonar as they swim by. It's actually a pretty cool video to see, too. But, uh, but here we're just doing, once again, another navigational search of the area just to see what's there. Um, and we're just getting data points. We are seeing how deep it is. We are looking for hazards. We are looking for bottom composition. We're checking out the bottom contour. Uh, I think on this one here, it was actually pretty flat. It was um, a little bit softer than the other two areas, but it was pretty flat. We didn't really have much drop off. Uh, we had drop off from the last one. We had about a two foot shelf that actually dropped off and a big pile of boulders as well that we had to, to record. Uh, I'm actually kind of curious to see how they're going to drill through that. I would like to be actually involved in this project um, at a later date as well. And if we do get to be involved, we will by all means record it for you as well and let, and let you guys actually see. I'm actually going to go ahead and show you some footage now of what I mean by these drill bits going down. They're pretty cool. They set these casings down in the water and they run this big auger bit down through the top that's got these big, I, I'm not sure if they're diamond drill bits or what, but they, they run it down in through these casings and they drill to set the pylons. And once everything's said and done, the pylons are set, they pull these casings off. Um, but here you can see in the video too, here's a large boulder we kind of swam across. And this was actually on one of the GPS markers where one of the casings of this bent was going. So um, that was the purpose of this. We could actually see this on sonar and sometimes we can measure on sonar based off shadows. Uh, but it's always easier if you put a diver in the water and you go down and you actually measure these boulders for yourself. And this was about a two foot boulder as far as height goes. But uh, but yeah, it's pretty pretty good size project that they're doing here. And and like I discussed with the foreman of the of the crew that's building it, um, when he asked, "Were well, divers necessary? Can we just use sonar?" Well, you know, it's it's a give or take. Sometimes you can just use sonar. Sometimes you can't. It's really based off the shadows of those returns and what's actually there. Um, we ended up finding another structure not very far from the bridge. So the point that we're fixing to go down on, not very far from there. Probably I'd say less than 100 yards to the left of that area we found some stuff that we thought would be pretty cool to go down and dive on so we're going to save that for a future video as well but this is going to be our last little survey here we're going to go down on this last little point and on this one we are going to be able to do an actual full circle search as well speaking of circle searches i get asked this a lot why do you use them so much if your lake is so full of debris and you know you there's a lot of hazards where circle searches can cause issues 
Why do you use them so much? Um, they're pretty consistent. They're pretty easy to perform, uh, whether you're diving alone or you're actually diving with a buddy. Um, they're easy to control. Um, and because we do have sonar technology to kind of survey the area first before we put divers in the water, then we can pretty much get a good idea of whether or not a circle search is going to be uh, efficient during a, a survey like this. So we really like circle searches and it builds up, you know, skills. If we wasn't in full face mask and we couldn't talk back and forth, this actually builds up skill sets between divers because then we're practicing our line uh, techniques and things like that. And to be honest, in real really good visibility. A circle search is a very fast and methodical search. It's very easy just to kind of spin around in a circle, um, especially if you're doing this with a buddy. And, and like I said, you can even do this while solo diving. Now, I wouldn't obviously suggest doing this type of diving as solo work, although we do do that sometimes. But circle searches are just so convenient, so they're so easy to perform. Um, and if you don't have a lot of debris and hazards, they make our work uh, or our job a whole lot easier. But now that we're on the bottom, we're just recording the last bit of data that we need to. And uh, we will go ahead and finish up at the end of this. But I wanted you guys to kind of see what it is that we do here. Um, here, here and actually, here's a great example. We got trees and debris. And you're going to see that we have to reset this uh, search area up, which once again, the good news is we're on comms. We can talk back and forth. So it made this circle search not as big of a hassle as what it would be if we wasn't on comms. Um, but yeah, I wanted you guys to see what a survey was underwater and how we perform it. It all starts at the surface. We use sonar technology to actually look at the area, see what's in the area, and to give us a good idea of how we're going to search the area. And we go ahead and, and jot that data down, whether it's depth, whether it's bottom composition, bottom contour, uh, what returns we get. And then we simply put divers into water to confirm what we already know based off the uh, sonar readings that we get or sonar returns. Most of the time when we go down, we're looking for three major things, contour, depth, and bottom composition. We want to know if it's hard sandy bottom or hard rocky bottom, or if it's really soft silty bottoms. We want to know if it's a flat shelf or if it's on an incline. And then of course, we will always want to check depth as well. Um, I can remember the days of doing things like this without sonar, and it was basically, uh, we, we had to pretty much guess where the GPS coordinates were and drop a buoy and then go down and search a very large area. Um, one of the things we do enjoy doing when we do work like this is filming it. We don't just film it for you guys. We're filming it for the crew that we're working for as well, and they that way they can get a better idea. We are their eyes and ears when we're under the water, and this makes their job a lot easier. It makes our job a lot easier and we just enjoy it. We enjoy every aspect. And to be honest with you, I really enjoy sharing these videos with you as well. I hope you guys learn from these videos. Um, I hope it encourages you to go out there and get the proper training to come and do stuff like this. And this is great training for any diver. Whether you want to dive at night, this is limited visibility or night diving, even though it's during the daytime. Uh, this is teamwork uh, diving as well. So we're all practicing the same skills that we do in public safety diver or search and rescue or search and recovery or stress and rescue. So this is great practice for us and great practice for you. But guys, if you did enjoy this, go out there and seek out training. If you, it's something you want to do get out there and train to do this uh, not only can you earn a good living doing it you can also help out your local municipalities and uh, your local uh, crews out on the water as well and who knows it may spark an interest and it might be something that you would want to do professionally as well not just for a hobby but uh, we're going to go ahead and finish this dive up. I will give you some final thoughts here at the end um, just to kind of close out the video. But I really hope you enjoyed the video and I really hope you learned from it as well. So there you go, guys. As you can see, it's not always a glamorous job. There's a lot of times we get down there and it's just literally seeing stuff with our hands versus trying to see it with our eyes. Now, this particular part of the lake is uh, a narrow, what we call a bottleneck section of the lake. So there's usually a lot of flow and current coming through here, um, but it is a rockier bottom. It's basically just bedstone down there. Um, and this crew's having a lot of difficulty uh, by placing their casings and their bridge pilings and all that in. And they really needed to see what was down there as well. So 
that was the purpose of this. I really hope you enjoyed this video today. If you did, give me a big thumbs up. Definitely share it as well. Let me know down in the comment section below, do you do any type of work like this? And, you know, how, how would you have done this to make it a little bit easier to survey for this company? Because I really hope you enjoyed the video. As always, make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Like us on Facebook. Pin us on Pinterest. Subscribe to us here on YouTube. And as always, guys, we appreciate your business.